How's it going everyone? It is Pangino here and in this video I wanted to bring you something a little bit different and tailored towards those of you on gaming laptops, looking to get gaming laptops or just looking to get the overall best performance. Recently Lano have reached out to me to see if I would check out their V12 laptop cooling pad. Now before you click off I was also very skeptical and I have tried out those generic brand laptop cooling pads in the past and I was not impressed whatsoever. When Lano reached out and provided the cooling pad for this video alongside sponsoring the video, the only requirements they had that I won provide a video and two provided my own benchmarks. They didn't want any say in terms of what can and can't be tested. They just wanted me to utilize the laptop, showcase it and see the performance improvements for myself and make a video on it. The reason decent laptop cooling pads can be so important is because temperature is the main limiting factor on most gaming laptops. Medium to high end laptop components such as the CPU and GPU are becoming more and more power hungry and power equals heat and any thin, light, nicely designed, portable all-in-one package such as a gaming laptop is only so much heat and power that these machines can take. Under moderate to high usage, this is why you'll see most gaming laptops get up to about 90 to 105 degrees and kind of sit around there. That's because either the CPU, GPU or both are throttling themselves to reduce the overall power because the laptop cooling system in many cases can't keep up, so you're sacrificing performance to ensure that you're operating within safe temperature parameters, which is good, but in those scenarios you are losing performance on your system. That's where the Lano V12 laptop cooling pad comes in. This is one of their many offerings which you can find on Amazon or even linked in the description down below. We will be getting into testing this, demonstrating it so you can hear the overall volume and most importantly benchmarks of it utilizing multiple different fan speeds to get a complete understanding of what this sort of product can offer you especially if you're on a medium to higher end laptop. Even if it's a couple of years old there are massive benefits to be had and it genuinely surprised me. Taking the cooling pad out itself you have a few included cables and extra dust filters. It is plastic so it's relatively lightweight but it does feel very sturdy you have adjustable feet at different height levels and you can use it flat if you wish to do so. You have this foam seal which the laptop will sit on. You also have legs which you can utilize to provide a tiny amount of pressure onto the laptop itself to close that seal which not only helps with overall airflow but it helps with dust prevention. Due to the sheer customization and power of the 5.5 inch embedded fan you do have a standard 12 volt barrel jack to power the pad itself but this also comes with some benefits. Not only do you get the included RGB customizable lighting you also have an included USB hub. So you are getting extra expansion there even though it's externally powered but it's understandable given the sheer power that this pad can put out especially at the higher RPM. Most Windows laptops will be more than compatible with this cooling pad but unfortunately there is no Mac support because the nature of this cooling pad having the fan on the bottom it does require you to have ventilation on the bottom of your laptop. So any laptops you're looking to upgrade to purchase or currently have flip them over if there is a decent enough sized grill on the bottom you will be getting good results from this because obviously if you have a completely bottom sealed unit like most MacBooks, there's nowhere for that air to go so you're not really going to see a benefit there. But this isn't the case on nearly all Windows gaming laptops. To utilize the pad just simply have it plugged in, put your laptop on the top, you have your LCD readout of the current RPM of the fan alongside this really nice quickly adjustable dial for complete control between 300 and 2800 RPM. Every time you move this it adjusts immediately so there's no sitting and having to wait. You also do not need any software with this pad because it's all hardware contained. Even having the V12 pad set to its slowest mode of just 300 RPM can still net you a decent temperature improvement with little to no sound over what your laptop will typically sound like under load. And if you're curious to how loud this thing can be, here is a complete demonstration of how it sounds. I think most people will typically go between 700 RPM and about 1200 RPM because that's where you're going to get most of the temperature benefit alongside not too much of an increase to overall noise. As long as you have ventilation on the bottom of your laptop, it supports all laptops ranging between 15 and 19 inches in size. There are four different RGB lighting animation modes and 10 different light combinations alongside solid lighting options in the color selection. With the specs and main demonstration out of the way, let's jump into the benchmarks. Across all my benchmarks, I've decided to go with a few different profiles. On the far left we have the stock laptop as it is on a desk how it would typically be used. We then have the 300 RPM base mode, we then have 900 RPM which is my personal sweet spot and then 2800 RPM which is the max which will give you a decent range because I think most users will either be utilizing the slowest, fastest or something close to 900 RPM so you can see how the pad would be for yourself if you wanted to go with it. Starting off with the Furmark 2 benchmark, this is representing a bursty workload as it only lasts for a minute. We've gone from 64 degrees at 
stock down to 62 at 300 rpm, 59 degrees at 900 rpm, and finally 57 degrees at 2800 rpm. For one of the newer game releases I wanted to cover, we're utilizing Black Myth Wukong. For the CPU, we've gone from 64 degrees at stock down to 58 at 300 rpm, 57 at 900 rpm, and 54 at 2800 rpm. That's really emphasizing how good just even having this set to 300 to 900 rpm is. You're getting a huge temperature drop by doing nothing but having this laptop pad just turned on. Next up for a higher FPS, more esports title, we're utilizing Overwatch 2. We're going from a stock 76 degrees down to 68 degrees at 300 rpm, 63 degrees at 900 rpm, and 61 degrees at 2800. You're probably starting to see why I've decided to stick around about 900 rpm RPM because I'm more than happy with how it sounds and the performance it offers compared to the other modes is phenomenal. Another thing to note whilst we're looking at these benchmarks, there are drastic differences to the overall GPU boost clocks on the screen depending on how cool the laptop is. For CS2, I want to emphasize the overall CPU temperatures because that's the main limiting factor in this game. At stock, we have 78 degrees Celsius. 300 RPM is delivering us 71 degrees Celsius. 900 RPM, down to 68 degrees Celsius. And finally, at 2800, down to 61. That is a 17 degree drop in the exact same game, the exact same position, just by utilizing a laptop cooling pad. Moving over to Cyberpunk 2077 for a gameplay test, looking at the CPU, we've gone from 82 degrees stock down to 70 76 degrees at 300 rpm, 69 degrees in the 900 rpm mode, and 66 degrees at the maximum 2800 rpm mode for a substantial 16 degree drop. Using GTA 5's standard benchmark, we've gone from 84 degrees down to 77 with the pad just switched on at 300, down to 71 at 900, and lastly 68 degrees at 2800 rpm. A quick note for those of you that have been paying attention to the on screen overlay in some of these benchmarks, in the 900 and 2800 rpm modes you may see that the GPU is utilizing more power and often has higher boost clocks than stock or at 300 rpm. The higher this is set the more aggressive your GPU may be able to boost itself resulting in better performance and an even lower temperature thanks to the higher rpm modes. Another quick test I wanted to provide was on DaVinci Resolve as this is becoming a more and more popular video editing solution so it's a decent insight to what most people may be doing on a laptop. Starting off at stock we've gone from 61 degrees celsius on the GPU down to 48 utilizing 300 rpm. 44 utilizing 900 rpm and finally 41 utilizing 2800 rpm and that last but not least leads us over to the Fermark 2 10 minute burn test a burn test is going to max out the gpu usage to 100 percent leave it there to see how it deals with heat soak this is going to be your best insight to longer sustained performance with this laptop pad on this machine looking at the gpu hotspot temperatures here we've gone from 83 degrees at 10 minutes down to 72 which is a massive 11 degree drop just from having this set to 300 rpm down to 68 at 900 down to 66 at 2800 rpm as you can see there are massive benefits to be had by utilizing a laptop cooling pad even on something that's utilizing an rtx 3050 the higher power components that you're utilizing with this you're more than likely going to see equal or potentially better performance and in all honesty i'm actually incredibly shocked by it i'll be making use of this on this laptop and all laptops i use moving forward especially when utilizing it in more of a desktop environment i love the portability of a laptop and it might be a bit cumbersome to take around the house with you but if you're someone that has a dedicated workspace where you play your games and you like to have it portable throughout the day then when it comes down to those longer workloads or when you need to do some rendering or some gaming sticking it on that cooling pad getting the dust filter benefits and all of that cooling performance even if you go with the base slower 300 rpm mode there are huge gains to be had there and in all honesty if you're forking out for a medium to high range laptop yes the lano cooling pad isn't the cheapest solution out there but it's definitely one that's incredibly efficient this could last you a few laptops make sure to check out the links at the top of the description down below to ensure that you get the absolute best price if this is something you would like to look into i want to thank lano for reaching out because in all honesty i would have ignored this product and i never would have actually seen the benefits of a decent laptop cooling pad solution and i'm thankful that i'm able to bring that video to you guys i see this is a win-win-win if you can justify the cost especially if you're on a medium to high-end gaming laptop i would definitely consider at least looking into purchasing this and seeing the performance gains for yourself thank you ever so much for taking the time to watch this video if you're looking for more content check out the playlist section in the description down below check out lano's full laptop cooling pad offerings utilizing the links in the description down below or check out one of the two videos on screen and i'll see you guys over there